Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Colin Zhu. I am host of Thrive Bites Podcast as well as the Chef Doc YouTube channel. We are at Brooklyn, New York, at the Vegan Women's Summit, and we are super excited for this event. Your name is Leah Garces, right? right. And uh, you are the president for Mercy for Animals. Right. <laughs> How are you doing today? Introduce what that actually means, right? And what is it you know, achieving at the moment and where do you hope to see it? Yeah, we're here at the Vegan Women's Summit. You can hear like the party's about to get started. It's super fun. I'm here representing Mercy for Animals. Our mission is to end industrial animal agriculture and transition our food system to a more sustainable, just, and compassionate one. That's what we work on and we're getting there. What are the current facts and figures right now, you know, for people that are not as well-versed with CAFOs, for example, and what is going on with industrial agriculture or animal agriculture? What is going on in the current setting right now? Right now, anywhere in the world, if you add up all the animals, it's 80 billion land animals are kept in cages and crates, confined in industrial animal agriculture, and they're kept in horrific conditions. They are kept in cages and crates, never to see the light of day. Conditions that if our dogs and cats were kept like that, we'd go to jail. And that's excluding all fish and crustacean. So we're talking a massive, oppressive system that is treating animals like widgets in a machine. And there's also harm being done to farmers, to communities, to workers. It's a system that really needs to change, and Mercy for Animals is working on that. And what are the initiatives you're working on right now? What has changed so far? Well, you might have seen in the news that the Supreme Court just upheld for the very first time an animal law that protects farm animals. This was Prop 12, and it makes it so that no animals in California can be kept in cages or crates or the products sold from those systems. This is the world we're moving towards, step by step, where animals are being respected and protected and free. And that's just one example. We also have cases where juries are siding with people who have freed and rescued animals from factory farms instead of um, the companies saying these are our property that we have a right to sell them. So really we're in a moving, changing world where the status quo is being questioned and disrupted and we just have to keep pushing. You know, from a medical point of view, from a consumer point of view, from a food lover point of view, there's this huge disconnect from what arrives on your plate and where it came from. Are there powers that be that, you know, make this disconnect really, really, you know, disconnecting? Like, what is what is the disconnect and why is it so hard for people to, you know, if they can't have their own dog and cat on the plate, you know, why other animals? What is the disconnect from your perspective and how do we go about changing that? This is a system that intentionally keeps the way we treat animals out of sight and out of mind. Everything possible is done with major marketing campaigns to make us believe that farmers are happy, that animals are happy, that this is a healthy system when it is quite the opposite. The, the companies that be, it's big mega meat companies are pouring money into Washington, D.C., into advertising to make us think that this is a system that doesn't need to change or actually to make us not think about it at all. So when we walk into the grocery store or we look at the restaurant menu, we're not thinking this is an animal who suffered or this came from a farmer who doesn't want to be in this situation or this came from a worker who is abused and harassed. Instead, we're kind of a cloud, a veil is put over it so that we don't know what's happening. So we have to intentionally go out of our way to try to understand the system. And that's tough. That's tough in a world, a very noisy world. Why come to the Vegan Women's Summit? The Vegan Women's Summit is so exciting. It shows the future of food. This is the largest gathering uh, of a future of food conference on, and it's mostly women leading this. And it really shows the potential, the disruption, the direction that we're going in. And it's super exciting. If I give you a magic wand and just say, Leah, if, you know, one grant you one wish, what would it be? Oh, make the world vegan. <laughs> I definitely would. And it's not just for animals. I would say that the best thing we could do for our planet, for ourselves, for our spirits, for the future generations that are not even born yet that we're going to hand this planet to, it's you know, adopt a plant-based diet. Like Move in that direction wherever you can, however you can. 
That's awesome. I wish you much success and can't, you know, please update us on what's next. I will. Thank you so much. Right. <laughs>